Good afternoon. Welcome back to the uh, ONG Strike Zone live here at uh, Radio Row. Brian Fulford and Marcus Green. It's a pleasure to be joined by our vice president and athletic director, Miss Tiffany Dawn Sykes, my Spartan sister. Pleasure. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the ONG. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, how's Atlanta? How's the trip been so far? The trip, trip's been great. I actually got in late Tuesday night so I could work on some logistics so that the team would have a smooth arrival. But, of course, uh, our great DFO, LaTroy Johnson, had everything in order. So, uh, you know, everything's been great. This is actually um, – I grew up as a CIAA baby. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad played basketball in the CIAA, and the mm -hmm. CIAA tournament used to be mm -hmm. my favorite sporting event. Um, you know, since the Celebration Bowl started, I've only missed two of these. Okay. Um, and this has become my favorite sporting event, not just HBCU sporting mm -hmm. event. It is my favorite sporting event of the year. So for me to have the opportunity to wrap up my first year as vice president and athletic director at FAMU at the Celebration Bowl is pretty special for me. What, what is it about this event as you look at this? And obviously you have the CIAA tournament sort of to kind of compare and contrast. What is it about the Celebration Bowl that is so so huge. I mean, I, last year was my first year, and I've been bragging for the last year to people like, oh, you have to come to this. What what do you see? What have you seen? Well, I think, you know, when you look at HBCUs from all across the country, I'm talking Central State, Wilberforce, Prairie View, mm -hmm. Norfolk State, Florida a and I mean, all across the country, um, we have um, a number of alumni who have uh, – settled, for lack of a better term, in Atlanta. For example, Florida A&M has three uh, alumni chapters in the greater uh, Atlanta area. So to bring an event of this magnitude never just brings out the two competing teams. Mm -hmm. You see, We will see people at this game tomorrow in full force from FAMU and a little lesser force from Howard University, but you're going to see people from Winston-Salem State wearing their Winston-Salem State gear. Right. You're going to see people from St. Paul's College, which is now defunct, wearing their St. Paul's gear. You're right. going to see people, I mean, from every school. And I think, you know, as a two-time HBCU alum, we always talk about the HBCU family, mm -hmm. right? We might bicker and pick back and forth, mm -hmm. but when it comes to us versus them, it's always going to be us. Mm -hmm. And this event gives an opportunity for all of us yeah. to be together. And that's one thing I really, really enjoy about this event. Right, right, right. Go ahead, Marcus. Yes, uh, there's one question I wanted to ask. I mean, I know there's a lot of excitement around the game and a lot of excitement about you coming up on your first year or concluding your first year as athletic director and vice president in Florida a and I wanted to ask, um, and based on your past experiences and sharing information with other athletic directors and us having had five championships in the last couple of years, hasn't been in the SWAC, having been in the SWAC, what opportunities do you see for the family athletic department in order to continue to grow and become that model or sustain that model of being the best athletic department? Well, we certainly have, we have had a remarkable time, you know, um, being able to have the number of reigning champions that we have with the number of sports. We only offer 14 sports at FAMU. Mm -hmm. That is the lowest number of sports you can have to qualify as a Division One institution. I think in the SWAC, the only two schools with 14 are us and University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Mm -hmm. I would love to find the resources to add another sport during my tenure as AD, you know, at FAMU. Um, but thinking about what it is to be successful, you know, I, I've told repeatedly, my goal is for every student athlete to walk away with a degree in one hand mm -hmm. and a championship ring on the other. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so while I get to sit and do these interviews and be regarded as the vice president and athletic director, the one thing I shared out even at the board of trustee meetings, we don't have this level of success if we don't have internal and external stakeholder support, mm -hmm. right? It means so much. It, we're in a social media world. Mm -hmm. So for our student athletes to be able to get on their now X accounts and be loved on by alumni mm -hmm. is incredible. But, you know, everyone knows about what happened kind of in week zero and the season of 2022. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was my number one focus when I stepped into this role for that to never happen again. Right. But that does not happen, one, without the help of the provost, the registrar's office, academic advising inside athletics and outside athletics, because what people fail to realize is 
when you start your season, you're down 20 players in week one, you're down 10 players in week two, you're down, mm -hmm. you don't get to see your full complement and your full roster and everyone to get reps together as a cohesive unit until you're in week two, three, four. Mm -hmm. The fact that we were able to work together to make sure that he had his full complement of players and they were able to see what they had mm -hmm. from the first time we kicked off, mm -hmm. that's what leads to this success. Yeah. You know, Coach Simmons is an excellent coach. X is an oh, I mean, he has it. The way he manages and leads his program is phenomenal. But I've got to give credit to all of the people at our institution who put him in a position to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I've, I've told people, um, it's like when you took this job, this was a, a challenging job because I'm going to use the analogy of a boat with a lot of holes in it. And it's like, which hole am I going to fix? And there's a lot of holes. And people are like, well, she needs to do this. She and I, I kept saying, no, the first hole that needs to get fixed is the one that put us in a bad spot in the beginning of 22. And all that other stuff I know will come. And I know she's going to be able to get it done. And, yeah, you know, it, it's going you know, to be hurt feelings from a lot of people who want to see X, Y, and Z done. But seeing that compliance done and what it has led to is now it's like, okay, we've patched that hole. we repaired that hole. Now we're working on other things. And um, so it brings me to this, you know, the, the resources and the finances of FAMU and FAMU athletics yeah. are a challenge. And I, I look at this stage that we're in and with I, I estimate, I don't know how we track this, but I'm thinking 30 something thousand Rattlers will be plus in attendance. How do we get those Rattlers engaged in donating to athletics and giving to athletics to increase that revenue what kind of what kind of things are you wanting to see happen from this whether it be in game post game whatever because I, I know that's something that you're working on but right. I, I mean it's a big challenge well uh, you know I, I continue to tie this back to compliance right mm -hmm. because when we're talking about alumni wanting to invest and we talk about corporate partners wanting to wanting to invest we have to make sure that there is no reputational risk right so one we wanted to make sure that we had everything in line internally to make sure that we could share with our stakeholders that this is a good investment of your time this is a good investment of your resources um but you're right i, I need to be in a position um to capitalize on these, those resources so even with this trip the celebration bowl the greatest football bowl game in my opinion I met with the Atlanta Braves while I was here, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, they have a Hank Aaron Foundation that provides resources to baseball and softball teams. Nice. And so I laid out, we need turf, yes, right, mm -hmm. at FAMU Baseball. That's a $2.1 million project, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, we have a number of things that just require resources. The bathrooms mm. have been the hottest topic on facilities <laughs> since I've been here. Mm. That's an $8 million project, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, there have been so many... I hate to say small things that we're doing, but I, I told my external relations team, don't print a single thing from athletics without putting a QR code that goes to the Rattler Athletic Fund. Amen. Right? Amen. When we go places, we now travel with placards with the QR codes on it. And God bless Sean and Lakeisha Gaines, who are in our Gaither Society, which is a club of $25,000 plus donation annually. Mm -hmm. um, she's hosted a strike tour event, which raised close to six figures. She's donated well over her $25,000 commitment and she was in her suite at the uh, Florida Classic with those same placards making people scan the QR code and donate to the Rattler Athletic Fund nice. you know to get into her suite yes. and we need that level of aggressive recruiting mm -hmm. you know from our alumni and those who say they love us mm -hmm. in order to provide these experiences you know for our student athletes yep. Yep. Go ahead Marcus uh, Once again I'm kind of looking at coming up on your anniversary of starting officially as the athletic director and VP, what would you hallmark as the most impactful accomplishment over the first year? Oh my gosh, the most impactful accomplishment in our first year. Um, you know, um, there is some data that we have turned into the NCAA. Um, that will be shared publicly in the spring. Mm -hmm. And I cannot really share the full details of that. But I think Rattler Nation is going to be really, really pleased of the outcome. I mean, it is going to be probably the most significant um, positive data report that we have had. Mm. You know, um, everyone talks and they make memes and they send me things about our APR and mm -hmm. we did a lot of things 
um, to make some corrections there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got to show some love to Rika Calhoun, who's a director of University of Compliance and Ethics, but also we brought in Brittany Johnson, who um, is our senior associate AD for compliance and her team of people, um, because not only are they able to educate, they have the historical data on how to uh, data on how to go back and analyze the trends. Okay. So w where are we having trouble academically? Where are we having um, challenges in eligibility that give puts us in a position to make mm -hmm. take corrective action? Mm -hmm. So um, I think my most significant thing um, is to be announced <laughs> okay. very right. very soon. Okay, I love it. I right, love thank it. You. Um, I know your time is short, um, and I don't want to keep you long. I just want to let you know, we are here to help the athletic department and you in whatever way. So if ever you have a fundraising goal or initiative that you want, you know, spoken to or about to Rattler Nation, let us. Uh, and there's a lot of great entities that are, you know, promoting FAMU athletics. And I know we are always talking about do more with more. We mm -hmm. want FAMU to do more with more. And so uh, whatever we can do to help drive dollars into whether it, obviously we may not be able to reach those big time boosters but there's a lot of small time rattlers that are give 1887 every quarter every month or whatever yeah and that adds up it sure and does. so whatever we can do to help please use us please you know whatever we can do we'll promote it we'll promote the heck out of it and uh we are there to support you to support the athletic department because we know our university is great and we want to continue to be great. And uh, I want to say we appreciate you. And uh, I know this first year has been fun and exciting. It's also been challenging. And uh, there, there, are, there are great days ahead, you know. So I'll, I want you to know you, you have support. You have support from the ONG Strike Zone. We, we want you and want FAMU Athletics to be great. And so uh, I just wanted to say that. And um, – yeah, that's that's it. That's it. I, you know. Yep, I, I appreciate you. You know, I've mentioned it already, but um, the Rattler Athletic Fund. If you're listening, mm -hmm. you know, every single um dollar goes to support you know our student athletes, our programs in some ways. So when there are um, oh, <laughs> you know, when there are um, we have teams with limited recruiting budgets, mm -hmm. and once they exhaust their budgets, I go into the Rattler Athletic Fund to help provide expenses for our coaches to go in and recruit and bring back mm -hmm. the best athletes that we have. Um, we are the football team, right? Mm -hmm. They have told me, AD Tiffany, if we win this, when we win this celebration, mm -hmm. but we don't mm -hmm. want one ring, we want two. We oh, want one to celebrate yes. the SWAC championship. Yep. We want one ring to celebrate the celebration bowl. A, a ring for it. One ring is going to cost us about sixty to $70,000. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. about, a let's say, $140,000 fundraising effort that's going to need to take place but to, to give them what they deserve. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, again, I promise to be a great steward of every single penny that comes in to support our student athletes, support our coaches, and uh, really take FAMU athletics to the next level. 30,000 Rattlers donating 1887 to drive that, that's done. I, to, do the math, folks. 30,000 Rattlers in Atlanta just donating the minimum, 1887. Our guys will have those rings. And who knows? You might even make it available so we can buy some rings, too, as supporters. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just putting that out there. You know, we do. Um, <laughs> we have had some conversations with a few uh, ring vendors about um, creating fan rings mm -hmm. to make them available whenever mm -hmm. we win championships. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've thought about some different models. Do we sell the fan ring at a premium to raise money? Mm -hmm. Or do we sell the fan ring at a cost that requires them to purchase a ring for a student athlete. Yeah, I don't like that. I right? like that. Yeah. You want to buy a ring, you got to sponsor a ring mm -hmm. and cover the cost of both. You got to figure out who we're going to sponsor. So, Somebody sponsor right. one from the show, well, you, well, know, you know, exactly. Yeah. Thing, you know, I, um, we get these really nice presentation boxes and I've talked to one of our companies about, you know, can I say Tiffany Sykes um, sponsors J-Mo mm -hmm. and his championship ring mm -hmm. and it's a, right, and you can go on the website, and we can have a drop down box. Tiffany can select J. Bam Morgan's name as the person mm. she wants to sponsor, and then their name gets put in the presentation box. So go. we're Love looking it. at some really creative ways to um, celebrate. Okay. And that's the type of thing I was speaking of earlier in terms of what you may have seen, not only your only creative ideas, but what you may have seen elsewhere to bring here that would generate or enhance, put gas on the fire that's already lit. 
Yeah, you know, um, every place is different. You know, um, you know, my most recent experience, I was at the Ivy League institution, and I was telling someone, you know, I had a $2.5 million project for our ski program, and a 30-minute call with the friends of Dartmouth Skiing, and the man says, well, you know, I can give you a million without talking to my wife, but I need to talk to my wife about the other million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that was pretty easy work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we have some opportunities out there. Yes. We have a lot of people, um, a lot of untapped people. But like you said, even the donation of 1887, when you get someone who is a first-time donor, yes. they continue to receive information from the Rattler Athletic Fund. They receive information from Dr. Shante Friday Stroud's team, who's do, doing an excellent job with the University Foundation. And I think, like, for me, every time my alma mater sends me something asking me to give money, mm -hmm. I give money. Right. Yep. But sometimes people don't get the ask. So it's really important that we get them on the hook for that first donation yes. and let the work a little become a little easier for us. Yes. Uh, well, again, thank you, VP Sykes, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to a, a great celebration this weekend and even a bigger one by I'm going to estimate by mm, three forty five, four o'clock. I think if I recall last year, by about four o'clock. Watch out because the streets are going to be orange and green out uh, in Atlanta. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with some more guests. You're watching the ONG Strike Zone live from the Cricket Celebration Bowl Radio Row. I like him. Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowerment J-A-X. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> 